Hey guys, welcome back. Today I want to share with you five ways that you can improve your copywriting. Now these are going to be things that are not technical. It is going to be more Google focused than Facebook focused, but you can still use these techniques for both platforms. And we're going to talk about how to connect your copy with your user base and how do you figure out what those emotional points are going to be that you can pull on those strings to either get the interest you want or drive the action you want and hopefully both, right? So I'm going to dive in here and we're going to go through each one. I'm going to give you some examples. The first thing that I always love doing and it's so powerful is I look at reviews and I do this in a few ways and I do it for a few different purposes. So I'll describe my whole process here. Number one, I go to our client's website with their product pages and I'm reading the best reviews and the worst reviews and I'm building a list and I'm trying to come up with the top two reasons why customers love it and the top two reasons why customers hate it. And Amazon sometimes is a little bit different. Sometimes Amazon has way more reviews and sometimes you can really get down to the bottom of things a little bit easier on Amazon. So don't, don't miss that even if you're doing e-com on Shopify for example. And then I do this across four to five different competitor sites and it's so interesting to see that usually there really are specific reasons why a customer would prefer a competitor's product over our client's product. And if you're focusing on the right things and you can really hit the messaging right there where you want it to be without uh, you know, competing, it can be very clear why your product is better for this particular customer or for this particular reason. The second thing that I always love saying with reviews is how are customers talking back to us? How are they speaking to us? For example, we were working with a cookie company and they were saying things like, get your fresh cookies, 15% off. And their customers were saying back like, I love these cookies, they're amazing. I put them in the microwave, I put mine on a whipped cream on mine, I buy them for my boyfriend, but then really they're for me. Or my, my mother cries every year whenever I get her these cookies, she loves them so much, they're her favorite. And that kind of passion, that kind of interaction, that kind of personalization is incredible. And many times in reviews, people are showing us that. And so what we want to do when we're writing ad copy is interact with them back in that same way. Now it's not always just pure passion and excitement like with cookies. For example, we work with a couple of uh, accreditation certification uh, platforms and with those, it really is more serious and people are spending thousands of dollars to become you know, accredited in certain areas and they don't wanna talk about passion and you know, they wanna talk about how serious is this program? How do I feel afterwards? How confident am I? How prepared am I to take that next step in my career or in you know, uh, whatever I'm trying to do next? And so it's very important to match the vibe back that uh, users are, are working with you on. The last thing that you want to always look at whenever you're reading reviews is look at what were people's idea before they tried the product. And this will give you a really good idea of what the objections are that you're going to need to overcome in your ad copy and then further on your landing page, right? So people will write things like, I, w I was a little nervous about this because I didn't know if it was good, as good as the photos or I had heard about this, I had read reviews on this other site that said that maybe this wasn't the best model, but then. And they're going to tell you what their before thoughts were and what their after thoughts were. And these reviews are awesome <laughs> because they really allow us to see what are the objections that people have in their head. And then we'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute. We'll want to definitely use this information from the reviews. So dig in on the reviews, read more than you think that you should, keep updating yourself, reading more and more. There's always something to learn from reviews. Number two, this is similar to reviews, but we take it a step further. Go to the Instagram, go to the YouTube channels, go to the Facebook page, and start looking at comments. Now, if there's an industry, for example, there was a client that we were working with in the finance industry, and we were able to find financial advisors and such that were very much so influencers in the space, or uh, you know, people that people were following and listening to their content, and consuming their content to learn or to grow. And in that case, go to those those people's pages and understand how are they speaking to their users and how are their users speaking back to them. And another example of this is we were working with a product that I went to their competitors page 
and their competitors page was much more uh, built out they had way more followers and we just saw this this passion this interaction with these products that we didn't see yet on our page we didn't really understand what people were wanting from the product, what people were using it for. So by getting into the Instagram side of things, especially, that's usually where I like to go is Instagram, if there's enough followers, but sometimes YouTube is also good and occasionally Facebook pages, and see how what are people saying, what are they feeling, how are they interacting. This is gonna be another great way that's not gonna be, you know, there's only a certain percentage of people that will ever leave a review, but there's a, usually a larger or at least different percentage of people that are also writing comments on social media and usually they're a little bit more raw, they're not as well thought out and so it can really give you a different view into what's going on in their head as they're interacting with your vertical or your type of product or even your own product if you're not used to reading your own your own uh, comments on on ads or posts or you know social channels definitely get involved there. It's uh, it's going to open your eyes to a lot of things that you can definitely use in your ad copy. We'll talk more here in a second. The third thing is know your customer's objections. And usually I like to have a list of at least five. In a Google ad copy, it's so important to add these into the ad copy. You don't have to you know, very clearly state everything. But for example, we have a client that a lot of people wonder, is it hypoallergenic? And in the case of our client, it actually isn't, but let's pretend like it is. You would want to put that in the ad copy, hypoallergenic, because you know that people are looking for that. And you can even put it like in a call out extension or something, but get it in the ad copy. Whatever those objections are, or whatever people are thinking next, like, but does this actually work? Okay, 100% guaranteed results, or I mean, that's an extreme example, but you see what, what I'm saying here. I will say, that when going through this exercise with clients, it's interesting because a lot of clients know their customer's objections immediately and they're spot on. But a lot of clients tell me things that whenever I'm going through and doing my research, they contradict each other. So I always encourage, don't just take somebody's word for it, what the objections are. There is usually plenty of information online from, for example, the one and two, numbers one and two, the exercises that I just talked to you guys about. If you go through these exercises, you will find uh, you know, those top five objections. Go ahead and make sure that whatever you've been told or whatever you think in your head might be those objections that they do align with what people are telling you. The fourth thing to think through is what job is my customer trying to do with my product? And this is a very interesting concept. I'll give you a quick example. So when somebody takes a break from work and they want to go outside and take a, you know, a breather, some people go to a coffee shop, some people light up a cigarette, and some people open Facebook, for example. Some people call their mom, you know? <laughs> uh, so in that particular arena, the coffee shops are competing with the cigarette companies and those are both competing with Facebook, and those are both competing with family time or you know whatever. So it's a really interesting thing to think through. And for example, uh, we work with an e-bike company, and it was really fascinating going through this example because what we found is that senior citizens is a huge demographic, demographic for this particular vertical, and you know, we, originally coming in, which was quite uneducated, and now we know at the time, uh, but we thought that this was for a young, hip crowd. It's, you know, a type of a, a tech product that's new, but no, it was primarily being used by senior citizens to get their, their freedom back. And people who had had health problems that can no longer physically ride a bike, but who love riding bikes. And they were now using this product to get their freedom back, to get their life back. And reading reviews was just completely, uh, you know, kind of heartbreaking in a great kind of way, you know, that's just like, wow, this is such an incredible use of, of this product. And, and I was so happy to find that. So, you know, dig into that, think through that, what jobs, could you know our our users or could uh, users or customers be using our product for and, and then speak to that a little bit more in the copy? That's number four. The last thing, and for me this is debatably the most important thing: write your ads to be scannable. It is so so important. People don't read anymore. 
People do not read, I don't read, almost no one that I know reads. <laughs> so you have to write your ads to be scannable. A couple of tips here for how to do that. First of all, uh, train your mind to be able to look at ads like you've never seen them before. And I know this takes time, this takes a little bit of practice, but start start checking yourself on your own gut reaction. Not only when you're looking at other ads, but when you're looking at your own ads, check your gut reaction. If you just glanced and saw this thing in a split second, what would you see? What would pop out to you? That is so important. When you, the, the, another way to think about this is the way that somebody reads. So they read top left to bottom right. And this is a very basic thing. We've all heard it for years, but it's true. So when you're reading top left to bottom right, what stands out? And you can do this, you can look at this in videos, you can look at it in, for example, a Facebook ad and going from the top of the text uh, down to you know wherever the video would be, like two seconds in, and then maybe catching the headline. Uh, you know, that's the way it's going to be read. With Google ad copy, they're going to look at, you know, the top headline. Usually the top couple, like, like the general headline section kind of pops out. So they scan the headlines. They, they look at the keywords, uh, you know, in a scanning type of way, scanning for the keywords that they're searching for, for meaning. And then they most likely do not read all of the description, but they'll pick out certain words. And then some of the, the call out extensions below um, or the other ad extensions, you know, is what, what they see. So this is so, so powerful. And if you start looking at your ads from a scanning perspective, you will find things. You will see things that you've never seen before. And it's so important to, to build things this way. The, even furthermore, it, even if somebody fully processes certain information, their brain goes through a, a path, right? And so if they fully process the first information, what is the actual second information that you want them to process? What is the third uh, you know, piece of information that you want them to process? And make sure that visually these things pop as much as possible. Uh, sometimes, not necessarily Google ads as much, but in, in videos or in Facebook ads, uh, other places, typography is a really big thing as well. And Google ads typically, you know, the first letter of each word is capitalized, uh, but typography can also be used and think through this of how you can make certain things pop. If you need that second to third thing to really pop and be scannable, think through ways that you can do that uh, with typography, placement, and then just, you know, general messaging. So these are the five things. I hope that you guys have found this helpful. I would love to hear from you. If there's other things that you love that really helps you write an excellent copy, I would love to hear. Thank you so much for tuning in today.